Columbia, Missouri, a town of 108,000 citizens. It rests in the middle of the state and country. With a mix of rural farmland and metropolitan college life, Columbia has a mix of just about everything. Me and my team of fellow Colombians took to the street to highlight all the great features this magnificent city has to offer, ranging from the great outdoors to the lively university. We cover everything. I'm like, hey, what's up, hello? Since you're pretty ass, soon as you came in the door. I just want to chill, got a sack for us to roll. Married to the money, introduced her to my stove. Showed her how to whip, and now she remakes it for One of the things that makes Columbia the thriving community that it is is being home to the University of Missouri, established in 1839. As the only major university in the state of Missouri, the college attracts nearly 40,000 students every year that call Columbia their home. We interviewed actual Mizzou students about their opinions on the university and what they love about MU. Uh, I like a lot of things about Mizzou. Um, it's a fairly good sized school and there's a lot of new people to meet. Uh, there's always activities going on, um, like the library and everything else, and I'm always keeping busy. I'm a really big fan of downtown. I work downtown, that's where my office is. Um, and literally downtown wouldn't exist unless there's like Mizzou population here coming in every fall and every spring to like revitalize that with a really creative um, community in terms of shops and restaurants. And I just love the shops and restaurants down there. So I guess it's without Mizzou, downtown wouldn't be as cool as it was, but sometimes it gets overcrowded, which is also downside. I think it's mostly been positive. Not only does Mizzou offer fantastic academics, but also a beautiful scenery for enjoying the campus. Without Mizzou, Columbia simply would not be the same city. The history and attention provides the city with a fantastic culture that many other communities are envious of. The history and future of Mizzou and Columbia have always been correlated, and that's unlikely to change in the future. Without Columbia, Mizzou isn't the same, and without Mizzou, Columbia isn't the same. Columbia's downtown is quaint but lively. It features all the must-stop restaurants that Columbia has to offer. First on the list is Shakespeare's Pizza. It was founded in 1973 and is a Columbia, Missouri landmark known for its popular pizza and its unconventional decor. Its original location is in the intersection of Ninth and Elm Street in downtown Columbia, across the street from the campus of the University of Missouri. In November 2010, Shakespeare's Pizza was the winner of the Best Bites Challenge College Edition on ABC's Good Morning America. Kurt Minchin, the owner of the joint, had this to say. I like working here because I like throwing parties, and that's what we're doing here. We're not just making pizza. That's part of it. But we're, the bigger picture is we're throwing a party, and it's a lot of fun. And, you know, mom and dad and the kids come, and dad has a beer, and mom doesn't worry about the kids spilling a soda on the floor because it's concrete. Everybody has a good time. Students come down and enjoy some pizza. And then everybody pays us. It's a heck of a racket. Uh, we have a lot of fun. People all over town seem to like it. Well, Shakespeare's is my favorite pizza place. I best pizza I've ever had. Um, I really like how they just have so, they have so many different options. You can go during the lunchtime and get just a slice. Um, any other time, you can get a whole pizza. There's you can choose like all the toppings and the cheeses and sure they take a while to make the pizza but it's totally worth it. Um, I have loved Shakespeare's pizza and I'm really sad that they're tearing it down but they're making it bigger so it's fine. Next on our list is Booch's, a restaurant and pool hall at 110 South 9th Street in downtown Columbia. It was founded in 1884. Their cheeseburgers, which are served on wax paper, were named one of the top 10 burgers in America by USA Today. Nothing has changed in the place since it is opened, and people all around town seem to love this greasy spoon. Gucci's Hamburgers is one of my favorite spots in the entire world. Uh, it is a dirty old building, which I like. I think it makes the burgers taste better. The burgers are the best burgers I've ever had in my life. Uh, I like how it's a simple menu. I like how the wait staff treats you kind of like crap. Uh, I just like the whole atmosphere of Bucci's. It's a uh, best spot to get a burger. 
Our last stop is Sparky's Homemade Ice Cream. It opened in September 2003 and has been serving up outrageous ice cream flavors ever since. From Red Bull shakes to cicada ice cream, Sparky's has some really unique flavors. And it's not only that, Sparky's has an atmosphere you just can't beat with a variety of paintings covering the walls, the doll sitting in the windows, and how can you forget Sparky himself sitting outside the shop? It's no surprise people around town seem to like it. Sparky's I really like because they allow you to sample the ice cream before you actually choose one. And it's, I mean, it's locally owned, which is also really nice. I like supporting local businesses. Sparky's ice cream is a dope spot. They've got all kinds of cool flavors. They get alcoholic versions of ice cream, which is kind of an interesting twist. Uh, I think the decor, the color scheme, all that is really cool. It's a good place to take a date. Uh, you can sit outside, eat your ice cream, kind of catch the vibe of downtown. The Columbia downtown is full of character, and it is a crucial part of the Columbia atmosphere. As the city expands and people come and go, there is always one constant, the prominence of art culture in Columbia. Whether your interests lie in painting, music, or even filmmaking, there is a strong and passionate community behind you. It isn't hard to find. In downtown Columbia, tucked between big businesses or in an outlet of their own, you will see plenty of studios and galleries, each with their own unique story and niche in this culture. It's sort of an artist co-op, and there are lots of different artists. There are probably more than 50 artists, and so we each rent space, and we make whatever we make, and we are the designer of our own space. I've been here for a long time, on and off, uh, but over 20 years recently, straight. So I have seen it develop. Um, there always was a nice art culture here, um, but not like there is now. Um, several years, the last several years has really, I think, built it up. There is a large support system for other kinds of independent artists in Colombia as well, including filmmakers. Yeah, I think we've really created a dynamic independent film scene. It, it seems like with the creation of Ragtag Cinema from its little storefront on 10th Street to Hit Street and um, the True Falls Film Festival and Citizen Jane and the film program at Stevens College and Columbia Access Television and a lot of the films that have been shot here, You're Next, and um, a lot of the independent film makers that live here, it's just really created a buzz and a lot of filmmakers that choose to live and work here and they kind of pass it on. Um, none of that existed 20 years ago and 15 years ago it started growing and now I feel like it's all these little offshoot branches. So it's a great place to live and work and make movies. Downtown Columbia is made lively by the constant presence of music. Whether you are a musician yourself looking for a venue, or someone who appreciates good talent, you'll find it here. Well, it's definitely got a unique music scene. Obviously we've got some uh, quite a wide variety of venues in town, um, and that sort of draws in. It allows a lot of local artists to actually develop what they're doing and perform and be seen, which is great, because a lot of places that have like a large music scene don't allow smaller artists from in town to actually perform. So it offers a unique experience for a lot of the um, in town artists. And I know that there's a lot of people who actually do recording and business like that here. That also draws in a lot of people. Even if you start out playing in your garage, you can get seen here, which is the great thing. You can get gigs book booked at places like Rose and Blue Note fairly easily, as long as you're a pretty tight group. So getting seen here isn't that difficult, and that's one of the special things about Columbia. You can really put yourself out there if you have the drive to do it, and I'd just say go for it, because that's the best thing you can do to advocate for yourself. I've grown a lot, and things like uh, True False Film Festival has helped, because that, those people are really in the arts. And when they come here, there's more motivation to be part of that and to have art for them. Um, other things like that, like Roots and Blues, has really, I think, increased the art participation here. Columbia may not be the biggest or brightest city, nor the newest or oldest, 
but it is difficult to find a community with a richer art culture. Although Columbia is mainly known for its downtown scenery, the vast, nature-filled city is a sight to see. Columbia holds more than 45 parks and trails in a matter of 60 square miles. I like them a lot. Um, it's nice to see that they're doing more of the, you know, parks in each neighborhood sort of a thing. That was something, I grew up here, so that was something like that I really liked about the neighborhood I grew up in is we had that park there to go play at. So it's nice to see that they're kind of moving back to that mm -hmm. instead of the big, like, central parks in town. Many people in Columbia love the fishing atmosphere that the city holds with over nine public ponds and a total of 90 acres of clear blue water. The locals say that Columbia is one of the best areas to fish in the state. The active park goers and bikers in Columbia feel that Columbia has done a great job taking care of the nature-filled city. They seem to agree that former mayor Darwin Hinman and current mayor Bob McDavid have done a great job keeping their promises to get families out of the house and on the trail. Um, I think as far as for a city, uh, the last mayor, Darwin Hinman, did a lot to kind of make that one of the city's main priorities. Um, this current administration, it doesn't seem like it's as important, but I think a lot of the initiatives that you're seeing put in now are still kind of holdovers from the last mayor, but um, they do, you know, as far as compared to some other cities our size, we have a lot of parks and a lot of priority put on trails and stuff like that, so that's nice. I think um, the previous mayor put forth a lot of sort of uh, health advocate stuff into place, and um, I think it's coming true now, you know, I think budgets are going to become easier to, to make those things happen. Um, so I think for the most part they do a really good job. Of... From the MKT Trail to Cosmo Park, the outdoors of Columbia, Missouri is something to see. Columbia has so much to offer and it has a bright future. The university in downtown provides an upbeat culture while the trails and parks provide for a healthy lifestyle, making Columbia, Missouri a great place to live.